Um, I want to take time right now to um, go into the Word of God, go into the Scriptures and read some uh, portion of the Scriptures. If you have your Bible, could you go together with me to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. And if you do not have a Bible, you are just free to listen as I am going to read Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law. And then in verse 19 it mentions works of the flesh. I think it mentions about 17 different things that the flesh does. Verse 22 talks about, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. But those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Somebody say Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to speak today on a simple topic called Spirit Walk spirit walk we're going to talk about our relationship with holy spirit a lot of times i feel like that the church is afraid to um, talk about holy spirit is because of the mission and the work of the holy spirit in the bible that is to point to jesus and to glorify jesus and some people feel like because the church because the holy spirit the third person of trinity his assignment is to point to jesus then we should never really talk about him because well he always wants to remain anonymous but that is not true because jesus talked about holy spirit and though holy spirit points to jesus jesus constantly pointed to, to, to the holy spirit and apostle paul always wrote about the holy spirit and we just wrote a small like, a small expert small portion of the scriptures where apostle paul points out to christians to walk in the holy spirit many of us must understand that the early church did not have the book we have but they had the holy spirit and many times we want to have the results that they had not valuing the being the person that they valued when we valued the book they didn't have they did not have the writings of Paul they did not have the writings of Peter those came later but who they had is they had the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit led them and because the Holy Spirit led them they lived according to scriptures but they lived in the Holy Spirit amen most of us as Pentecostals and let's do the camera work with such a ways that we don't cause any distraction uh, most of us as people who are Pentecostals or charismatic we understand the talk the spirit talk means anytime I even uh, saw during one of the missionary trips when I think Anna or somebody went with some girls and they came afterwards and they testified here and one girl mentioned a very unique perspective on the Holy Spirit she said when I went to the mission trip my Holy Spirit learned few few new words and it was kind of funny to me and inside because I knew what she was talking about and, and she meant every single thing right but in her world the Holy Spirit was reduced to few syllables that come when you get filled with this aha moment, this, this ecstasy of heaven. And it is true that Holy Spirit gives us a language and most of us know the Spirit talk we know that Holy Spirit comes and you begin to speak in a known language and you become edified and you become filled and it's one of those occurrences you don't tell your friends about because you're going to get into a theological debate and so you just leave it to yourself and it's just kind of like it's my world I do what I want with Holy Spirit and so Holy Spirit talks but in here Apostle Paul talks about the walk of the Holy Spirit it is good to have the talk of the Holy Spirit but the walk of the Holy Spirit speaks of something more than speaking few things you don't understand with your natural mind. It talks about a walk, a lifestyle in accordance and a life of relationship with the being who fills us with a language we don't understand. The Spirit walk. The Spirit walk. To walk in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we can receive the gift of tongues but not develop the relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. 
and our desire as a young people our desire as kids is not just to receive the gift of tongues that's why for those of you who come to our church you notice that in our church the highest priority after you receive Jesus and after you get baptized is not just to get you to speak in tongues it's not just simple hey come and we can pray so you can receive the same gift that we all have to speak in tongues that is not really the aim the aim is to know the Holy Spirit and to walk in the Holy Spirit because you can talk the Spirit without walking in the Spirit but if you walk in the Spirit you will talk in the Spirit and that's why the aim is not in the pressure I remember when I was growing up younger and we had these groups where we would pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit indicating that you will receive tongues and the pressure was not so that you get filled with Holy Spirit and the pressure was not so you can walk in the Holy Spirit the pressure is so that you can pronounce few syllables nobody else understands and if you got the syllables that's it you got the Holy Ghost but in reality that is not accurately and theologically correct because we have the Holy Spirit when Jesus comes to live inside of us and the focus and the pressure has to be not on speaking the Spirit which is also very important and it's a significant gift but Paul says walk in the Spirit. Can somebody say amen? And that's where the aim has to be of our lives. I want to speak to you just just briefly a few basic thoughts from the scripture we just read about walking in the Holy Spirit. I am in no way an expert. I am just a fellow learner just like you on this journey to know God who is with us today, God the Holy Spirit. And the first thing I want you to write down if you are taking notes is the relationship with Holy Spirit conquers inner conflict. Relationship with Holy Spirit conquers inner conflict. Amen Joseph? That's right. Relationship with Holy Spirit conquers inner conflict. Uh, people who take notes are world changers and in our church we encourage everybody to take your notes. So if you have, if you can take notes, you can grab your phone, take, take notes app out of it and just, just take some notes. It will help you to pay attention and it will help you to remember something even if you won't read it again. But the messages we preach here are so powerful. They're going to be worth reading again, posting on Facebook and Twitter and making a photo collage on Instagram for the glory of God. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> Relationship with Holy Spirit conquers inner conflict. We read in Galatians chapter 5 where Apostle Paul says that inside of you there's a conflict. There's a flesh. The flesh is like the carnal nature, like the, the, the bad dog. And the Holy Spirit, which is a gift from God you receive at salvation. A flesh is what you get when you are born physically. Holy Spirit is what you get when you are born spiritually. A flesh is what you get when you are born for the first time. A Holy Spirit is who you have when you are born for the second time. That's why we Christians use this phrase born again. And so because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you also have the flesh which is what you got. It's actually the devil's gift on your birthday. Devil gave you a gift when you got born. It's called your flesh. It means it's that thing that's always bent on doing evil. You have it. I have it. All of us have it. But God gives you a gift when you get born again and He gives you something better, a lot better. He gives you not just your conscience, not just your desire to do good. He actually gives a Holy Spirit on the birthday of your second birth. And so you have these two, the flesh and also the Holy Spirit. And because you're born again, this conflict already exists. The only people who don't have this conflict are those who don't have the Holy Spirit. People without Holy Spirit or without salvation, they do not have a conflict. That doesn't mean that everything they do they like. It doesn't mean everything they decide they enjoy. It just simply means that they could do something wrong without a tension. And when they've done it, there is no troubling, sleepless torment and guilt. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not there to bug their mind. When you are a Christian, when Holy Spirit lives in you, it immediately creates a conflict. But it's not the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that conquers the conflict. 
it's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that creates the conflict but it's the relationship with Holy Spirit that conquers the conflict that his presence creates let me repeat that again many of us think that the moment I get saved Holy Spirit becomes the conqueror and he conquers my inner conflict not realizing actually the moment you get saved you create a conflict inside of you that previously you did not have because presence of the Holy Spirit immediately because he's opposing to your flesh he creates a conflict inside of you that's why Paul says he says the flesh lusts against the spirit means they are on the completely opposite side because when you did not have the Holy Spirit flesh did whatever it want and you suffered as a result but Holy Spirit's presence creates a conflict but when you have a relationship with Holy Spirit that lives inside of us he in return conquers the conflict we have on the inside there was a woman in the Bible who, whose name was Rebecca and Rebecca had two children in her womb. She had twins and she went to God and the Bible says that when she went to God to ask about the two twins, the scripture says that there are two nations in your womb. Two nations in your womb and the Lord gave you a prophecy. He said that the younger will dominate the older. And the Bible says when there was a delivery time happening that both of them were fighting. Who is going to get out first? and would make sense and so the the older the guy who got out first his name was Esau but the guy who got out second his name was Jacob and so the interesting part is the one who was born first they both were in the womb one was first one was second and the one that was second was prophetically supposed to dominate the one that's first I mean her life I know and for those of you who already lost me right there but this is a perfect picture of what happens inside of you you have one that was born first it's called your flesh and you have another one that was born second it's called the Holy Spirit and there's a constant tension inside but the prophetic word is this is if you develop a relationship with Holy Spirit the younger will dominate the older it means the bad the thing that wants to do bad things inside of you, that thing will be on subjection when you receive Jesus that the good part, the Holy Spirit part will dominate the devil part inside of you. Everybody say, if you understand, say yes. yes. Relationship with Holy Spirit conquers inner conflict. If you're assuming, hoping or wishing that relationship with Holy Spirit will remove an inner conflict, you are daydreaming and you are out of the context of the scriptures. Sometimes we think that if I reach the special heights with God, I will be so high out there where the devil is just there is going to be no flesh and I am going to be a little angel with feathers flying all around with wings and I'm going to be above the flesh and I'm going to stand here and say, I am holy. Don't get tempted. I don't know what lust is. I don't know what greed is. I don't know what laziness, procrastination, mediocrity. I don't know what you know all of this stuff is this is just above because I am so in the spirit that doesn't exist with Holy Spirit you don't have an absence of conflict actually his presence creates a conflict with Holy Spirit with his relationship we conquer that conflict and that conflict becomes under dominion of the Holy Spirit somebody say yes the second thing I want you to write down is relationship with Holy Spirit fulfills you relationship with Holy Spirit fulfills you Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 that walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh relationship with Holy Spirit fulfills you why is this so significant because the flesh that you and I we both have inside and another thing it's important to point out when you get saved your flesh does not get an update when you get saved God does not provide an upgrade for your flesh it's like you know what your flesh was bad let's kind of soften the rough edges around it you know like no murder thoughts just like bad thoughts but not like suicide thoughts let's do you know like no really bad thoughts the flesh you have inside of you is the same flesh Hitler had inside of him the same flesh you have inside of you is the same flesh the worst person in the world has inside of him don't think because you're Christian God somehow gave you the Holy Spirit and also like hey you know I know we can get rid of this but let's try to polish it no polish man literally God left it completely untouched the way it is that's why I don't be surprised if Christians can do some things that non-Christians will not do 
Why? Because Christians have the same stinking flesh that every single person has on this earth. The only difference between us is not that we only have flesh, we also have the Holy Spirit and if we develop a relationship with Him, we will not live according to our flesh. Somebody say yes. Relationship with Holy Spirit brings fulfillment. Why is this so important? Because Apostle Paul says that lust is of the flesh and the flesh lusts and when I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit it doesn't cause my flesh not to have any lust it will just cause those lusts not to be fulfilled and it's they're not gonna be not fulfilled because I will strive and I will be like so oh, so hard it's just because I am gonna be so satisfied with Holy Spirit that those lusts will no longer seem as enticing attractive and pulling to me as they would be when I would not be satisfied with Holy Spirit it's a simple principle if you ever went to a restaurant and you had a very good meal and you ate and you were this full right here and you know when you are this full when you cannot take anything else especially if they bring like the best sweets in the restaurant and you you like them you want to eat them with your eyes but you know if you put one thing inside of your mouth the whole table is going to be filled with other things that are sweet that are not sweet and so you you know you're full and you can't take nothing in why because you are full the reason why lust of the flesh will not be able to pull on you is because you're full of the Holy Spirit the relationship with Holy Spirit is the only protection against craving and demand and intense pull and enticement of your flesh a relationship with Holy Spirit is the only guarantee if you have flesh lust problems which every person has in here and lust not doesn't necessarily pornography lust doesn't necessarily sexual lust is in every area of our life and lust is like an athlete's food if you ever had an athlete's foot something happened when you when it itches what do you do you scratch it and it itches the more you scratch it to remove the itch but you realize quickly the more you scratch it the more it itches that's exactly what lust is it's never meant to satis be satisfied it never can be content it's a bottomless hole the more you throw into it it just vanishes and it asks for more it's like a fire in your house you bring the furniture to kill the fire but it makes it bigger you brought your bed to kill the fire it makes it bigger you brought the kitchen cabinets to kill the fire it just makes it bigger and at the end you throw yourself there and it makes it bigger and you have nothing that's exactly what lust is lust always wants more and more and more and it never leaves you satisfied that's why if anybody here has ever been addicted to pornography you know one thing that pornography never satisfies it never you never could have enough you're like you know what enough no there's always harder there's always harder there's always harder until people begin to play out what they see on it on a computer screen why because it's a bottomless hole it's never enough but the most fascinating thing fascinating thing about Holy Spirit is the Bible says that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit you have a bottom and you can be filled and sometimes you don't need a Columbia River size of the Holy Spirit to be filled. Sometimes a drink. Jesus says, if you have one drink, it becomes a fountain inside of you. Some of you, you experience this presence. When you come in into worship and when you come in, maybe during reading of the scriptures or maybe during prayer, where the presence of Jesus, not in an astronomical, powerful way, but just, it seems like a drop and your whole bottle became filled. Why? Because Holy Spirit relationship fulfills you. The essence of that relationship is fulfillment. The essence of that relationship is satisfaction. Can somebody say yes? Somebody say amen. All Christians have Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit does not have all Christians. And that is the difference between walking in the Holy Spirit and having Holy Spirit. All, all of us here, we have the Holy Spirit but not all of us here Holy Spirit has us the relationship with Holy Spirit brings satisfaction when you have this relationship when you have this walk your life begins to be marked by fulfillment that doesn't mean you don't have lust 
that doesn't mean that you don't have temptation it doesn't mean that sometimes you don't have even things that inside of you feel like there's that pool but you are content and you are satisfied with lust you are never satisfied and to overcome lust is to be filled with Holy Spirit D.L. Moody stood in front of a group of people while he was preaching he took a glass an empty glass and he asked the students in front of him he said how do I remove the air out of the glass and one student got up and he says well you can vacuum soak and and suck the air out from the glass by putting a vacuumer there he said the problem is that if you suck the air out of the glass with the vacuumer the glass will crack and you're not gonna have a glass he said the best way to remove the air out of the glass is to fill it with water because as the water goes in the air goes out and that's exactly the way to remove lust and sin out of your life it's not to try to suck it out now the programs for Alcoholic Anonymous the 12-step programs all of these have a place but the Christian way of dealing with it even in those programs the first step is not to get a vacuumer and suck sin out bad addictions I don't want to do this I don't want to curse I don't want to do this it's not to suck it out it's to be filled with Holy Spirit who pushes it out of you most of us think that if I deny my lust only then I will be ready to be filled with Holy Spirit but it's actually the opposite only when you get filled with Holy Spirit only then you can deny your lust and so the Paul teaches us he says you have to be filled with Holy Spirit only then you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh and so I gotta tell you turn off the vacuumer relax your main goal today has to be is Holy Spirit fill me with your presence and as you fill me with your presence every evil thing is gonna get flushed out it's a law of replacement I've done this I, when I've heard this for the first time I've done this in my own house when I put half of the glass with milk and I decided to get the milk out without pouring the glass and it's actually fascinating you can do that in your own house it works for everybody it will work for you too what you do is that you put the glass a half of a glass of milk in front of the faucet and you open the water and you just watch the transformation it will take a few minutes you watch as the water goes into milk and at first it seems like it's just mixing with milk and you're just gonna have a diluted water not for long as long as the water keeps going in and then the cup begins to overflow and you see it gets diluted 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 until all of the trace of milk until there's not one drop and not even a trace of milk in that glass that is the power of the Holy Spirit when you get filled he flushes things out the goal is not to empty yourself so you can be free for the Holy Spirit the goal is to come to the Holy Spirit so you can get filled and then things begin to get flushed out can somebody say amen? amen can somebody say yes and so I want to encourage each one of you here for those of you who have things you want to suck out of your life you don't need a new vacuumer new year begins and many people have new resolutions this is what I want to quit and this is what I want to do and they end up cracking under the weight of the lack of their efforts and discipline the best way is to be filled with Holy Spirit and at times you will feel like well I feel like I'm mixing things I feel like I still have this and I'm trying to reach to the Holy Spirit Paul said walk in the Spirit he didn't say get rid of your lust he said walk in the Spirit and then you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh amen Number three, relationship with Holy Spirit makes rules necessary. A relationship with Holy Spirit makes rule necessary. So we mentioned the first thing is that relationship with Holy Spirit conquers inner conflict. The presence of the Holy Spirit creates that conflict. We mentioned the second thing is that relationship with Holy Spirit brings fulfillment in our life. And we mentioned that lust can be conquered when we are satisfied and that all Christians have Holy Spirit but Holy Spirit doesn't have all Christians the third thing is that whole relationship with Holy Spirit makes rule necessary now I want you to listen very carefully one of the portion of the verses we've read tonight in Galatians chapter 5 is when Paul says if we are led by Holy Spirit we are not under the law so if Holy Spirit leads us we are no longer under the law now I want you to notice what Apostle Paul is not saying 
he is not saying if you are led by the Holy Spirit you don't need the law you don't have the law and the law is completely out of your life he just says when Holy Spirit wasn't your leader the law was when Holy Spirit is your leader the law is not your babysitter you are no longer under the law now for those of us who are Christians we understand that the law which is Old Testament precepts there was actually three different laws the ceremonial law which was fulfilled in Jesus the ceremonial law is when they brought a lamb on a Passover like we you know have Easter so what they did during that time in church is they brought a sheep and they killed the sheep in the church and that was a ceremonial law we don't do that no more if you come on our Easter service we can guarantee you no kill sh uh, sheep killing we don't do that because that was fulfilled in Jesus but then there was a second law second types of laws it was a civil law for example a civil law meant you have to watch your borders you have to uh, watch how you grow things you have to watch what kind of seeds so it had to be a civil law which mainly applies to the nation of Israel we don't live in Israel we have a different civil law today in our country and we try to live by it but there was a third kind of law which we still have as Christians all the way from Old Testament it was called moral law it's the part where the Bible says thou shall not kill with the part of the Bible says thou shall not steal it's the part where the Bible says thou shall have no other gods in front of you that law though was fulfilled in Jesus it's still in our life today because many Christians say things like well we are no longer under the law the law is done with and today the only thing is we are under grace true ceremonial and civil but not moral the moral law is still in the life of a Christian now the difference is in the Old Testament the saints were under it the law the Bible says was a tutor it was a babysitter all of these laws people were under it but the Bible says here when we are led by Holy Spirit the law is not our babysitter no more because we have a leader so where does the law come into our life the law the rules are there to confirm not to condition a relationship with Holy Spirit write this down the rules are to confirm not to condition a relationship with Holy Spirit and I will explain that in a minute the rules are not to condition but to confirm a relationship with Holy Spirit so they are not to condition but they are to confirm a relationship with Holy Spirit how many of you have a gym membership if you go to a gym to sign up for a gym membership they give you laws they call them rules there's no Ten Commandments but they have certain rules at the end you say agree and because you agree upon these rules you join the gym so the rules are the way you enter into your relationship with your gym if you break any of the rules what do they give you they kick you out they take your membership and you're completely out that is Old Testament now let me give you a New Testament those of you who have a home when you were born in your family every single one of you you did not have to agree to any rules before you were born in your family right I don't think your mama sends you a, a file in your womb says do you agree take off your shoes clean the dishes and don't walk on the carpet and feed the dog and cut the grass on Saturday and don't curse and don't swear don't do drugs if you don't don't come out of there find you another mommy none of us had that we are born and we never had any laws to be part of the family am I right but once we are in the family we have rules in the family why not to stay in the family but because so that we can grow in that family and when you break the rule do you stop being a son no you can get a timeout you can get spanking you may lose your wi-fi password which will be the end of the world <laughs> you may have to do certain things but you know one thing is that when the rules are broken in the family it's not the same thing as rules are broken in the gym because in the family the rules never caused you to enter the family and therefore they cannot cause you to get out of the family everything is based on relationship 
in the gym things are based on rules so what Paul is saying when I have a relationship with Holy Spirit it's like a family the rules are there to confirm and to protect a relationship not to determine the relationship but the rules are still there the rules are still there and the rules are very important to relationship with Holy Spirit anything worthy anything valuable is protected you have if you have a car you have an insurance on your car now some of you you don't have an insurance on your car and which is bad but if you have a nice car you have an insurance on your car if you don't have a car you don't have insurance there needs to be no rules if there is nothing to protect it nothing too valuable to protect it if you are married you have certain rules around your life as a married couple these rules you didn't present them to the person that you're married to on the first date and says do you subscribe to these based on our mutual agreement let me give you a ring you give me a kiss and we enter into into our marriage that is not how it worked but when you do get married you establish certain rules in certain homes different rules matter like in our homes this is the rule is that you when you walk into the house I have to remove my shoes that is the rule that me and my wife have we remove our shoes now if we don't remove my shoes if I don't remove my shoes I don't my wife doesn't my relationship doesn't break with her but this is the rule that we have I don't live by this rule I live by a relationship but this relationship is protected by certain rules that we have in our home in our relationship the way I relate to other women the way she relates with other men we have certain rules why because this relationship is so important it deserves to be protected anytime a Christian says I don't need any rules in my life it simply means your relationship with Holy Spirit is not worth protecting but if it's valuable and if it's important it must be protected you must have guardrails around your relationship with Holy Spirit just like you have guardrails on your ramp or on your road to keep you going on the right track can somebody say yes somebody say amen and the last thing I want to share with you about relationship with Holy Spirit, I write this down. Relationship with Holy Spirit is a gift to people around you. Relationship with Holy Spirit is a gift to people around you. That means when you know Holy Spirit, you become a gift to people who are around you. So the first thing that we shared is relationship with Holy Spirit is what conquers our inner conflict relationship with Holy Spirit is what gives us fulfillment we said secondly the third thing is that we mentioned that relationship with Holy Spirit it what did I say about the rules makes rules necessary so we are not under the rules we are above the rules but we still have them we have those rules to guide our conduct and to help us protect the relationship not to secure our salvation and then the fourth thing relationship with Holy Spirit is the gift to other people and this comes from the verse where Apostle Paul says that the fruit of the Spirit and he mentions nine characteristics but before that he mentions the works of the flesh the works of the flesh are about 17 and the fruit of the Spirit is nine now stay with me just for a few more minutes it's interesting that the Bible says here not fruits of the Spirit you would assume it's talking about nine different characteristics like love, peace, patience, kindness and you would assume it will use proper grammar by calling it fruits of the Spirit because there are many of them but it's using word fruit when it talks about works of the flesh it uses plural works when it uses fruit it says only fruit not fruits of the Spirit why? because Holy Spirit all of these nine characteristics Holy Spirit develops at the same time in your life you can develop one of them by yourself but you cannot develop nine of them by yourself at the same time you can develop love at the expense of self-control you can develop kindness at the expense of love you can develop one work on one while all five other of them are just rotten to the bone but you cannot develop all nine at the same time only Holy Spirit can take all nine and at the same time develop these in your life 
a person can develop one at the expense of another but Holy Spirit develops all nine at the same time that's why they're called fruit not fruits of the Spirit therefore you and I cannot say well I have the fruit of love but I don't have the fruit of patience that means you don't have the fruit of the Holy Spirit the fruit of the Holy Spirit is all nine you may say oh my goodness uh, that's not possible that's why it's called fruit of the Holy Spirit it's not called fruit of fasting it's not called fruit of your prayer it's not called fruit of your New Year's resolutions it's not called fruit of your workout it's not called fruit of reading self-help books it's not called fruit of I'm gonna work it on myself it's not fruit of your efforts because if you work on yourself if you pump an apple that's all it's gonna be but then you see all others will be struggling but when Holy Spirit is working on it they're all nine being produced at the same time and somebody say amen so it's a fruit of the Spirit versus the works of the flesh but the interesting part here is that it's a fruit it's a fruit a fruit grows slowly a fruit is not a machinery produced by a machine where things can be done so quickly a fruit first is sour before it's sweet and this is the frustrating part that we get sometimes as Christians is when you walk with Holy Spirit you begin to notice that your character and change in your life does not happen all the time that's why I have a hard time believing testimonies where people say my life was radically changed on that night I know what you mean but I also know what really happened your life cannot be dramatically changed in one day it can't now you can receive salvation in one moment you can receive deliverance in one moment you can receive healing in one moment but fruit cannot be developed in one service and so after a week or after two weeks you will recognize you know what not everything changed that night and then after a month you will realize well you know what it seems like nothing changed since that night why because a fruit does not happen overnight and at first it's sour before it's sweet that's why as a Christian when you walk with Holy Spirit and you get so upset during traffic you get so upset with something that and many times you'll be tempted to say oh Holy Spirit is not working in my life yes he is you just have to pat yourself on the back and say my fruit is so sour today but it's on the way to be sweet you have to pat yourself on the back and when you see a fellow Christian sinning or maybe like you see that they're not that their, their attitude is so down you pat him on the back and say you know what we all can taste it's kind of sour huh your fruit is very sour but, but you are on your way don't immediately think that they got a demon don't immediately think that oh the Holy Spirit is so far from them oh they're so far from the Holy Spirit because they don't have these features in their life and they're not sweet remember before they got sweet they were first sour and so it's the process the Holy Spirit develops and Holy Spirit uses the word fruit to encourage you that if certain things in your life are still not in there where they're supposed to be this is not a moment to quit and say this is taking too slow can we hurry up God don't you have a microwave God don't you have a drive-through system God can we get it done faster I can help you to do it faster no this is the moment to say Holy Spirit I am not gonna quit in my relationship why because I know that it's a fruit and I know fruit takes time it grows it doesn't get made it grows it doesn't get created that's why with Holy Spirit you don't go through life you grow through life that's why with Holy Spirit every single year you are getting better you might not be better than me you might not be I might not be better than you but with Holy Spirit I am better this year than I was last year with Holy Spirit I can be better this week than I was last year why because it's a fruit and it grows but you know every single if you have trees in your backyard or in your front yard and I would encourage you to plant some if you don't have any because it's a fascinating interesting part of how slow they grow and it encourages your Christian faith but secondly of you can do nothing to pull a fruit out of a tree you cannot set up a blow dryer you cannot put a certain sprinkler on it to sprinkle you cannot feed it nothing the only thing you can do to grow fruits 
is that you can constantly and continuously work and cultivate the tree and the tree will produce the fruit on its own and this is my encouragement to you here work on your relationship with Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit will work on your character when you work on the character it's the same thing as coming to the tree taking a branch and try to pull an apple out of it now it will not give you an apple but if you take some water and you cultivate the roots if you come and you need to trim some branches and you, you, you pay so much attention to the tree, the tree will give you fruit and it will give you so much fruit that you will never be able to produce and manufacture on your own. The biggest mistakes we make as Christians is we look over the fence and see how non-Christians live and the way they produce their character is they make certain resolutions, they make certain goals, they make certain disciplines and they push it out of them because they don't have a relationship with Holy Spirit but you have a Holy Spirit you have a tree your goal is to cultivate the root to cultivate the relationship and as you cultivate a relationship he takes responsibility for how your character your personality turns out can somebody say amen and the best part is if you have a fruit the fruit doesn't feed the tree the fruit feeds people around it people who have a fruit of the Spirit are people who are benefit to people around them when you have a fruit of the Spirit, you are a blessing to your company. When you have a good attitude, your boss, even if he has a demon, he's going to be benefited from it. You're, if you have a fruit of love, if your co-workers, maybe they have a hard day, but you become a juicy, sweet, red, pink, red, well, that's actually not really good, pink, red, but thick, red apple to your co-workers. And every single day they come, they eat you. They're blessed by you. They love to be in your presence. Your company, when they go through layoff, they will keep the apples on the payroll. And all the sour people, they will say, you know, we lay you off. We don't have a position for you. But for you, because there's a fruit of the Holy Spirit and because you're beneficial, you are a benefit. You feed people. You don't starve people. You don't kill people. Your presence doesn't suck oxygen out of the room. Your presence is like an orange, orange or like a banana or like a good fruit. It feeds people around them and people cannot afford to lose you because you always enrich the environment you step into. You always feed the circle of friends that you are around. Can I ask you a question? Will you be missed if you leave your circle of influence? Will anybody starve if you disappear? Or will people not even notice that you were there? Are you a tree that has no fruit? Are you a tree that Jesus comes to and the Bible says he was looking for something to eat and there was nothing but leaves, nothing but just a Christianese, nothing but a bumper sticker, no character, no attitude that feeds and blesses people but just, well, I'm a Christian. You need more than that to feed people around you. You need to have a Holy Spirit produced character. The goal is not to go home tonight and say, this is what I need to change, this is what I need to stop doing and this is what I need to start doing. The goal tonight, today, is to say, I want to make my relationship with the Holy Spirit the number one priority. And as I do that, He will make my attitude, my character, my personality, everything about me, His priority to fix. You try to fix yourself. You're not successful. Try to work on the relationship and He will be successful. In changing and transforming your life. Amen.